Hi, I'm Dave from Sailing Laguna. In our last video, we left Fort Pierce, and as the winds built, we discovered that our sail wouldn't come down. We effectively had to pull the car off the track trying to get it down. We limped into West Palm Beach and had a quick look around the area, including the beautiful Peanut Island. All right, well, bye bye West Palm Beach. We've had a quick two days here. Uh, would have liked to have stayed longer, but um, that's it, the tropical waters begging. So we're just heading out from the Sailfish Yacht Club here. Um, conditions are meant to be a little bit challenging today with uh, about a 16 knot nor'easter breeze, uh, five second um, period on the waves. So anyway, we'll get out here and have a look and see what happens. What's wrong, Camel? I don't want to go! What's happened? Oh, leave me alone! Have you lost the internet? <laughs> Just as we came into Fort Lauderdale, we heard over the VHF that a plane had crash landed, possibly in the sea. Look out, this is the possible. We'll report all sightings along the vessel's position to the Coast Guard. Find Commander, United States Coast Guard, Second Army, Florida, break. Rush Captain, do you have any GPS coordinates for the plane over? No, but it's, it's definitely right around the Dania Pier south of it. I'm in the intercoastal as of right now. The plane looked like it went down on the beach. He went down below the tree line so we couldn't see him anymore. We didn't know if he landed or what. Fresh Cat Rescue Copy. Does the plane appear to be on shore or in the water? Over. Can't tell. I'm the intercoastal and there's a tree line here I couldn't see. Fortunately, the pilot was able to walk away from this forced beach landing. But that stretch of beach was only just south of the channel we were coming through. In fact, I think you can see Zanzibar's mast in the background of the amateur crash landing footage that's on the internet. This is sailing vessel coming up on the bridge, we're southbound. We then made our way through the 17th Street Bridge into one of the world's busiest waterways. Try and see if you can count how many boats are on the water as we make our way up the inner coastal. Or maybe it's just easier to count the super yachts. Our anchorage was just north of the Los Olos Bridge. Now, interestingly enough, the guidebook shows a photo of this anchorage, anchorage being empty, as though you are not allowed to stay here. But as of 2021, it's fair game. But if more derelict boats start to build up here, then I'm sure the authorities will change that. Anyway, its desirable features are that it's got a vacant lot uh, where you can tie your tender up and go across to Fort Lauderdale Beach, which is more than just a beach with, of course, basketball courts and an outdoor gym and of course the usual tourist attractions there as well. There of course are restaurants and small convenience stores. However, if you head a little upstream, there is a public dock which we tied up to that has good access to a public supermarket. There's quite a fancy mall there, uh, a laundry service, there's hairdressers, um, there's a Nordstrom rack, uh, office sort of supplies. Um, it's all accessible from that uh, public dock. It's actually very interesting this anchorage here because uh, the gaps in the buildings of course allow the easterly to flow through so those bo boats basically point to the east where the wind's coming from but um, I don't know whether you can quite see in the background there but some of the boats are actually pointing west as though the west the wind is coming from the west because the wind basically just sort of eddy currents or circulates here in such funny ways um, anyway yep this is our anchorage here in Fort Lauderdale Okay, Samantha, tell us what's happening. 
Okay, so this red and white sailing boat um, was anchored next to us last night. Joint venture. And this is MV Jewel right behind you. Um, this morning uh, we woke up after a rough night and it's in the middle of the channel, the ICW. So uh, the Coast Guard um, have been backwards and forwards a few times this morning already. And obviously they've tried to contact the owners, but no luck. So it now looks like there's um, some tow company um, about to tow it away. All right, well, let's have a look at this car problem. Um, the main car for the halyard uh, that takes the sail up, which broke on our last sail with the parts are in now. So let's check those out and see if we can solve this problem. All right, so this is obviously the uh, worn one. Now, um, you can sort of see there that, or maybe you can see, it's a bit hard for me to tell whether it's in focus or not, but there is a bit of wear there. Now, what is what the part actually should look like is there's just these sort of carbon rods or whatever rods they are, graphite or whatever material they are there, um, that basically go in these grooves here and they must be a little bit more of a, a frictionless surface. All right, well, job's all done. The main halyard car's now back in place. Um, I think this is the downhaul, or if you want to attach a downhaul, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but the bit that you saw up here, well, maybe because the GoPro went flat, but this bit, of, this bit of track here, as you can see, can be taken out. Of course, a rookie mistake is that um, I gave it a tap and then all of a sudden it became super loose and it fell all the way down to the bottom. And so I just had to use the main halyard here to lift half the sails up and then I eventually worked the rod back up to here, which wasn't too difficult to do. Oh no, Campbell, are we gonna make this one? Oh, there's, oh, there's a few things hanging down off this one. You better look out. Oh no. One of the must-do cruiser activities is to go on a tender tour of the canals. The exciting thing about the tour is that you have the challenge of negotiating your way under the various bridges. Of course the kids got a kick out of this and it made for an entertaining adventure. I can't recall what tide we did it on but you can see that we came pretty close to getting stuck a few times. The tour also allowed us to gain an appreciation for the sheer number of boats in the region. There were catamarans, of course, of all sorts, large super yachts, even larger super yachts, diesel boats and work boats. I'm sure you get the hint. Just off from the 17th Street Bridge, there are some garaged berths, which are pretty sweet to see, and one that was like a large storage shed, storing boats just like a jukebox would records. Amazing. What happened, Samantha? <laughs> um, yeah, well, I went to grab the ladder and the ladder's not tied on, so it yeah. came in and I went in too. We should always tie Mommy went for a ladder. swim. We but, should always tie the ladder. But where? Hmm, <laughs> but luckily it looks like the phone stayed dry, did it, Cooper? Yes, in the backpack. Here we are for New Year's oh, Eve 2021 to bring in the new year. We are in Fort Lauderdale. And as you can hear, it's a little bit windy, and we're in one of the world's tightest um, anchorages here. We got, uh, I know the, the camera probably doesn't quite do it justice, but um, that's it. We've got one right and there, right and we've got, the one that, um, we've got the one that dragged anchor, so that's probably the one that we're more concerned about, but that's it. Okay, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Everyone say Happy New Year. You know that happy feeling that someone anchors too close, and they solve the issue by putting out more chain? As the boats in this anchorage move around a lot, our anchor chains got tangled. Of course, both boats' occupants were out, although not far away because it was New Year's Eve. We had to lift the chain to see what direction 
the boats were wrapped in, we then directed the other boat to let out their chain and drive around us as we remained stationary. We then pulled up our anchors and fortunately it unwound the tangle. We had been spending uh, New Year's Eve on Rex and Cathy's 450 which was close by and it was great to actually have friends that could come and help us in this uh, terrible situation. Our boat sustained a few gel coat dings here and there and I'm sure the other boat did as well. Sam was very shaken up by it as well as the boys and I guess I sort of chalked this up to experience it and thought that maybe I should be more assertive in the future about people who choose to anchor close to us. Oh, and on a side note, one of the people who helped us was Chris Berry, who wrote a sailing novel titled Without a Country, Sailing to Sanctuary. Check it out for a good read. Well, that brings us to an end of part one of Fort Lauderdale. Join us next time when we get the catamaran hauled out, we have a look up at the CBD, and we see what adventures that all brings.